Hi, my name is Dale Bolton, and uh, in these next few minutes, I want to share a story that we really think is quite interesting that goes back almost over the last 20 years. In 2004, we heard uh, a statistic that just, it was almost impossible for me to uh, believe, and uh, it was that 40 million orphans was the orphan population in Africa. And I thought, that's, that's hard to believe because that's more than the population in Canada at that time. And so uh, we wanted to see what that was all about. And, and so we went with an organization that we knew and um, uh, went to Malawi and um, saw unsupported children everywhere and began to hear the plight of what happens to unsupported children in terms of their vulnerability. So we started to raise some money and um, came back and wanted to see different organizations that might uh, we might be able to help. And this time it was in East Africa, in Kenya. And uh, we went around and looked at different organizations. And uh, what was really surprising is, is that there were a lot of orphan care organizations and uh, they were sharing what was going on. One of the biggest things that they talked about was the need for to buy food because you know they might have 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 kids and um, there was an ongoing need for food. Um, now that to me was a little bit puzzling uh, because I couldn't see a garden anywhere and um, the growing conditions in this area were amazing. It's better than back home. Uh, so while they were asking me money for food, my dad back home was about 83 at the same time and he's still growing a third of his own food. I couldn't find a garden anywhere, which really perplexed me. So what we did is, is that uh, we started looking at now, how can we, what, what is gonna help address 40 million orphans? And the idea came to me, if we could just create food security, um, Africans have this amazing heart for children, they would actually uh, begin to take in surplus children. And we began to, uh, so we, we thought, well, why don't we try that? And so to really understand the dynamics that were going on over there, I went over and took a month long organic agricultural uh, college course and started meeting people who were graduating from this uh, little college. And, and I thought, well, why don't we, why don't we hire some of them? And um, they would do a five day workshop in little communities of, uh, let's say a dozen families, uh, setting up about a quarter acre garden. And um, over, the, over a five day workshop, they would uh, learn about uh, how to do organic gardening. And this went really well. But as we, uh, we made a couple trips in, in the future and we, and we were working with different community leaders, and uh, this one lady was amazing, and we um, uh, tried to reach her in the fall, uh, um, and we thought, we're coming, Why not, uh, can, can we chat with you? And there was no, nothing came back. And um, we asked some more questions, and it turned out that this lady had died. And we said, well, what did she die from? We said, well, they said they don't know, she just died. And we began to ask different questions, and um, not only was food security a big problem, but, um, Contagious diseases of cholera, typhus, TB, pneumonia, dysentery, malaria, meningitis was very serious to them. People lived under kind of the fear of every two to three years, something they could contract something which was uh, you know, pretty life-threatening. And um, we know that um, in many ways you can't change your lifespan, but you can change your health span. We began to talk to different um, naturopathic doctors and nutritionists and, and said, you know, we want to grow food, um, and this is what they normally eat. They ate a lot of cornmeal, they ate a lot of uh, white rice, white flour, and things like that. But we want to grow vegetables that really are going to uh, build their immune system because a very disturbing statistic came. Uh, the year later, it wasn't 40 million orphans, it was 41, and it kept on going up a million to two million every year because of caregivers dying. Uh, and we could see that it was directly related to um, the nutrition that they were trying to um, uh, get for themselves. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the cheapest food is, you know, the one they op uh, opt for because, you know, there's so many things to do that takes so long, like your laundry takes forever. You got to get water, that takes forever. And so just having a bag of cornmeal uh, that you bring to the mill and get it milled up and, and if that comprised 80% of your diet, uh, your body's actually pretty vulnerable to a lot of those contagious diseases. So these doc, uh, naturopathic doctors and nutritionists, they identified 50 different plants 
uh, that we could grow in our gardens. And we started to incorporate them. We said, well, you know, these are the foods that could probably build your immune system. And this was really, this turned out to be just amazing for people with HIV uh, and, and people who are vulnerable to pneumonia and, and different things like that. So we saw that by doing organic gardening, by doing nutritional training, and then herbal training, uh, herbal medicine training, uh, that the, the synergy of all three of them was so powerful. And instead of people getting sick two to three times a year, they might notice every two to three years they get something, but they didn't have that something could happen at any one particular time. When we go and visit the uh, projects, it was so refreshing. We'd ask a lot of questions and they'd say, well, you know, um, you know, I'm used to going to a funeral two or three times a month in, in this small area and, and um, if, when people do this, they just don't get sick. For every project we did, we found two to three communities that really wanted our help. And originally the name of the organization was called Organics for Orphans because we wanted to deal with the uh, orphan crisis. But again, we started working with HIV groups. We started working with prisons and medical areas and schools. Uh, and so many different uh, areas. Even a blind school wanted us to, to teach the students how to do things. So it's pretty exciting to see the change. And it was very controlled. We knew what our budget was. We knew that uh, for about $350, we could empower a community over a period of a year uh, with you know some tools, some uh, fencing, and some uh, seeds, and they would add some in as well. And um, we could see just a tremendous impact. And, and, and small, uh, you know, these little small projects were just uh, easy to monitor, easy to, the, the money wouldn't disappear. Uh, and so we were very excited about it. And so what we did, and a couple of years later, is we created our own training center. And um, with that training center, we could actually train uh, 30 or 40 uh, community leaders at a time. So every year, it just kept on getting bigger and bigger. And uh, we'd have students come from different countries. And just a powerful um, stories all over the place of people uh, you know, saying, you know, I, I, I was sick all the time and, and now, you know, if I ever get sick, I can grab some herbal medicine. It was really interesting to see our trainers. We found the trainers, we, you know, before long we had 40 trainers. And um, we began to see people come from other countries as well, outside of East Africa, from South Africa and West Africa and even parts of Asia. And um, it was, uh, you know, before long we had uh, close to a thousand projects. Since our humble beginnings in 2008, where we, uh, you know, I took that organic agricultural college, college course, um, you know, we can see a pretty significant impact in 20 different countries. And so um, I'm excited. I think that there is a potential for really to change um, by giving them the tools uh, that they can uh, empower their future, grabbing the first rung, and if they can get a little their food security and health security, and then if they've got a job, they can you know begin to grow and look after things like water wells themselves, look after uh, schooling, uh, and uh, even bigger medical things if they do come up. The future can look pretty scary, but I think the resources in creation are absolutely amazing. Hi there, my name is Linda Bolton and I'm the co-founder of Thrive for Good and also the CEO of NaturalCom Canada and founder of Bolton's Naturals. So how this story all began was in 2004, my husband Dale and I were working as pastors and we heard that there were 40 million orphans in the continent of Africa. So we went to Malawi, the poorest country in the world, came back to Canada thinking, what can we do? We have no extra money that we can actually give away that would make a lot of difference. And it was shortly after that time that my younger sister started using a magnesium supplement called Natural Calm that transformed her health for migraines and eventually my own health for insomnia and muscle pain. Natural Calm was not sold in, in Canada. It was only sold in the United States. So I imported a $200 wholesale order into Canada, started taking it to the natural health stores. And by the end of that year, in October of 2004, the owner of the company in the United States gave me the exclusive distribution rights to sell Natural Calm in Canada. And Dale and I decided right from the beginning that if our company was successful, we wanted it to be what we called a social enterprise, which meant giving profits after business expenses in some way to help end poverty. And one of the things that I love about it is that 
the mamas in Africa is really our entrepreneurs. And because I am an entrepreneur, I'm a, you know, I run my own company. I really wanted to see these women empowered because they're the ones who, who look after the children and, you know, really provide for things for their children. And, um, you know, they just really wanted to be able to help themselves. And I, I remember one story in particular that really touched my heart. We went out into a community that uh, where a woman had taken the five-day workshop and she was able to go back to her little home. Uh, Home. She was on a quarter acre, small mud hut, taking care of 10 of her own grandchildren, some other orphans and, and her own grandchildren. And some of her older children and herself double dug 40 garden beds. And as a result of that, she was able to provide, you know, healthy food for her children, enough money for their school fees. And after that, she was able to sell some of her produce and buy herself a mattress for the very first time in her life. This lady had always slept on the ground on burlap bags. And so when we met her, she was absolutely thrilled. And when Dale asked her, you know, what could we do to help her? She said, well, how about a, uh, a watering can? She'd been using a coffee can to, uh, to water her garden with. So there are many, many other stories and wonderful testimonies that I could share. But I guess the thing that I have really enjoyed over the last 20 years is not only growing a social enterprise across Canada and, and helping people to understand the benefits of magnesium, but also um, watching Originally Organics for Orphans now Thrive for Good, expand and grow and is now in over 20 countries in the world.